I think it was 2016, uh, Mike set out to do what we would call the brunch series where he would interview interesting people within the city and business owners um, to just try to learn about how they do what they do um, and why their business is special to them. Um, and on that journey, he came across Tinker. Um, and during that period of time, they were really gracious for us and welcoming us into their business. and you know, letting us see how everything worked. Um, and then we took part in a cupping class to where he filmed some things and him and Steve had a one-on-one. -on -one. So from there, the relationship just grew and it came to a pinnacle this year where we were supposed to host our marketplace, uh, the WDRFA marketplace hosted by Tinker um, at their establishment. And unfortunately with COVID, we weren't able to do that, uh, but we still wanted to do something as the relationship has already always been there and you know we wanted to kind of capitalize on that and take advantage of not having a marketplace but still putting something forward because it was really important for us to work with Tinker because they've always supported us and we've always supported them and all of our collaborations is built on that trust and built on those relationships. So uh, I would say that this collection came to be from uh, uh, years of a relationship, one, and then two, probably just trying to transition from what we wanted to do um, earlier in the year, which was a marketplace event, um, to bring a lot of businesses to Tinker, um, have a whole event, release clothes, bring people together, expose them to food, drink, and everything that Indy has to offer. Um, and then with the pandemic and the, the year going how it did, we had to adapt and uh, transition into doing something else and through uh, many conversations many meetings uh, we were able to uh, come up with this collection uh, which is titled adapt you know WDRFA times team the collection came to be uh, through years of a relationship with Mike. It feels like ever since we started Tinker, Mike and I have been communicating about something, coffee, or seeing each other in coffee shops for years. And uh, this is something that I always kind of had in the back of my mind to do, but you know, Mike was always busy doing different collections, and uh, we hadn't even really talked about it really until this year, until the marketplace came up when, uh, yeah, it was going to be a, a really fun experience where we could bring a bunch of different people together, a bunch of different companies together in this space and just introduce a, a really big audience to a lot of different uh, people that have collaborated before and are looking to collaborate after. So uh, when we couldn't do the marketplace due to COVID, that kind of got me thinking about ways we could work together. And Mike and I had lunch over the summertime and just were talking about things we could do together, different ways we could work together. And that collaboration kind of started to form from there. So it was really, really happy to be able to work with a, a company I've, I've admired for a long time, people that I've admired for a while, so it was cool to have it finally come together. So for me, collaboration brings about growth. Um, I look at every collaboration as an opportunity to learn about a different business, um, to take things from them in terms of communication, uh, maybe some things that we don't see. I think sometimes when you're just inside of your own business, uh, you only see things one way. So when you work in the collaboration, it forces you to not be as comfortable as you usually are. 
Um, so, and, and I look at that and say, okay, so how can I get better from the last collaboration to this collaboration? What are some things in terms of communication I could have done better? What are some things in terms of concepts that I could have done better or that we could have done better? So I use every collaboration as kind of a barometer to where WDRFA is now and where we want to go. Um, and also, it's very important to cross-promote. It's very important to reach into another demographic. I think that's what a lot of businesses, especially in a smaller city, sometimes we miss the mark on because cross-collaboration means that you know, you're getting more exposure uh, to both segments of consumer bases. The collaboration is important to me because it, it really does put a focus on something we've all had to do this year. We've all had to change our way of life, change the way we approach problems, change the way we look at each other, you name it. And uh, this collection just kind of, it's a physical manifestation of that idea. I think, uh, you know, selfishly, the, the clothing is it's super high quality. I'm excited to just wear it. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to showing it off around town. But I think the message behind it is, is even better. It's just really kind of, well, it'll, it'll always remind me of the, the challenges that we've all had to overcome this year whenever I put it on, put it on anything, or whenever I see the canister, or, you know, look at the mug. Uh, it'll be a good reminder of a year that was pretty tough for a lot of people. Uh, to me, collaboration is important, personally, because it's how I find out about um, a lot of things, whether that be, you know, businesses, restaurants, all the things we just mentioned. Um, but then outside of that, in regards to WDRFA, collaboration is important because uh, we deem ourselves to be a lifestyle brand. And kind of what that means is everything that we do in our everyday lives, we want to, um, you know, just expose people to and let people know that they can uh, patronize things within their lifestyle. So in regards to WDRFA, uh, collaboration is very important because it's how we are able to grow is how more people get to know about us and um, ultimately that's how we um, are a sustainable business. The word adapt means being flexible, not seeing every problem, not as just a problem, but, but as an opportunity to solve a problem, as an opportunity to, to try something new. You know, you have to adapt when, when the deck is stacked against you, you have to find a way to keep fighting, to keep scrapping, you have to adjust and adapt the way you do things if you want to be successful. And uh, and I think that, uh, yeah, just, just being reminded of, of how we can all change and how we can, we can solve problems creatively, uh, that's really what adapt means to me. In regards to 2020, the word adapt means to me uh, just being resilient and being I mean, honestly, just being able to adapt, being able to change and transform no matter what comes at you or what's thrown out at you. So uh, with that said, uh, it's just a special word to me for so many reasons, but definitely in regards to 2020, it's just being resilient and being able to do anything you can to make the best out of uh, the situation. I think for me, um, adapt means adjust. And... A lot of times we're hesitant to adjust because again, you may not be as comfortable as you normally are. But when everything happened with 2020, whether it's COVID, the political climate, and just so many different things happen, it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable. And you had to adjust to what people call the new norm, but I don't even call it that, I just call it reality because this is the reality that we're in right now. So for me, it's just about adjusting to whatever is thrown your way. This year, I think that we found um, ways to adapt by, uh, you know, coming out with this collection. Instead of being able to host a marketplace event that we had planned to do earlier spring this year, we were able to come out and, uh, you know, have a coffee shop make clothes and have a clothing lifestyle brand make coffee. You know, so adapting and doing something that we probably never would have did. Um, before this pandemic, uh, before this virus and everything else that's happened. I think that we adapted and we, we made some cool shit happen. From a brand standpoint, for WDRFA, I think it was important that we began to plan even more. Um, we've always done a good job of just understanding what we wanted to accomplish for the year. 
but we wanted to take that a step further and now we want to be even further out. So I think, you know, we use it as an opportunity to kind of slow down and really take a look at our brand, where we are now, where we've been, but more importantly, where we want to go. And we were able to do that by really planning. We were able to communicate even more because you had extra time. So I think, you know, all of those means, all of that communication, it got us to a point where now we're, we're really comfortable with where we're trying to go and how we're going to get there. So here at Tinker, we, we've had to adapt in a couple different ways. Our, our business has it's kind of flipped on its head. You know, we've had to go direct to consumer a lot more than we had, which is, um, which is a good problem to have, a good challenge for us. You know, it allows us to, to communicate more directly with the people that we are, are selling coffee to. We're, we're able to, to almost be in people's homes a little bit differently, meaning that we can answer questions that people have about brewing coffee. You know, we can, we can open up different lines of communication with people, be it through social media or, or just having people email any of us here. You know, it just kind of, it, it just has kind of shifted the, the focus because we haven't been able to get into restaurants and coffee shops in the way that we used to. Now we're doing a lot more stuff at home. So we, we've had to just find ways to be a, a better partner in, in people's homes versus uh, in coffee shops or, or out in restaurants. Uh, yeah, so I, I think it's a couple of things. I think the first thing is that you're never really in control uh, as much as we think we are. Something like this happens and it lets you know that, you know, personally, uh, from our country, from, from just everybody, you're never in control because something can happen and kind of turn everything upside down. But the second part to that is that's okay because if you plan ahead, um, if you're really consistent in what you do and that you understand that you're never in control but you want to just make things for you as consistent, as straight line as you can, then when those things happen, you can overcome it a little bit easier. You never just want to be in a situation where the worst happens and you didn't plan for it. And obviously this, things like COVID comes out of nowhere, but if you're really consistent in whether it be your beliefs or your communication with your business and every aspect of your life, you know, just striving to be right in the middle um, I think you can handle it a little bit better, and that's why the word was so important for us, because we know that you have to adjust. Life is constant adjustments. You know, we don't run from adversity. That's honestly what the brand speaks to. It's about adapting. It's about not running from adversity. So for us, it's just, you know, trying to be as consistent as possible. I, th I think the biggest thing that I would want people to take away when they see the word adapt in the collection is just you know, don't get discouraged. There, there, there's always a way that you can adapt to a problem. There's always a solution out there. It might not be an easy solution, and it might be painful, but there's always a way to adapt to what you're doing to, to get the result that you want. So I, I think that resiliency and, and just the, the ability to, to make positive change in yourself or your business or whatever it may be, I, I, that's really what I want people to think of when they think of adapt. I think that I just want people to take away uh, that you can adapt to anything, like you can overcome anything, like any adversity you face, anything that's thrown at you. Um, as long as you adapt your way of thinking, everything else will fall into place. So um, yeah, just adapt, be resilient, and do all that you can do to um, overcome you know, any adversity in any situation you might find yourself in. I would say all of them, but that's not a fair answer. Uh, so for me, I would say the canister um, because it just speaks to so many different things within both brands. Um, it's kind of just, you know, the start to the current place that we're at now with just everything that we've done. And it's an art piece. And I look at it as obviously the majority of people are probably going to use it for coffee. But for me, I'll find so many different uses for it throughout time. And it's so durable. So I'll use it obviously for coffee. I use it for sugar. I'll definitely use it as a lifestyle piece in my house. I'll put it on shelves. I'll do everything with it. So I'm just excited to use it as a multifaceted piece to the collection. Um, so that's my favorite piece, but I, I, I do want to say that the crew neck is definitely um, probably special to me just because it's so simple and what it says, but it means so much. The word adapt is a simple, it's a simple word, but it has so much mean, meaning behind it. And again, 
just just understanding that you have to adjust to whatever is going on. So I know I wear the crew neck so much because it means a lot when I wear it. And it'll always be a constant reminder that I have to adjust no matter what's coming. My favorite items from the collection, um, I would have to say are um, the canister uh, because it's so, it's just cool, it's super different. Um, and it's, I don't have anything like that. I've never owned anything like it and I don't know too many people with something like that. Um, and then secondly, I would say that the hats, uh, I pretty much wear a hat every day or every other day. And we made a hat that looks like a coffee bean. And then we also made a hat that is just, you know, just super cool designs. It's something that I know will be part of my everyday life. So I would say that uh, those three items are my favorite out of the seven that we created. Well, it's really tough to beat the canister. The canister showcases both of our company's history in a really fun and, and beautiful way. So it, it's going to be a really fun thing when I pull that canister out of my out of my cupboard and you know put the coffee in my grinder every morning. It's going to be cool to see, kind of think back to the relationship that we've had and, and the, the collaboration that we've done. So that that'll be tough to beat. Uh, I'm excited about the crew neck too. It's uh, it's going to be something I'm going to try and wear as often as I can, or I'll try not to wear it. I, I want it to look good for a long time, so maybe not wear it as much around the roastery. But I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the hats, too. I, I, I really like the, the style of hat we chose. I think the colorways are really interesting. They're unique. They're, they're not going to look like any other hat that you've seen. So it'll be cool to kind of use all of those three together. But uh, it's hard to pick one.